welcome back to Geek Bros Inc. Um, as you can see, we have our Zuko and Azula uh, action figures that we have gone recently, and I'm going to talk about the rules of the Agni Kai. The Agni Kai, from what I have done research on, is the duel between two firebenders when honor is challenged. This box is absurdly big for how little it comes with. That is true. See, like, th this is more like a regular kind of, almost looks like a figure arts box. It does look like a figure arts box. Has that feel to it without the figure arts price. Yeah, yeah, figure arts do not come at um, reasonable prices. And then we also have Katara. She's important, but of all these, her facial expressions look the most cartoony. They do. Yeah, they do. And she's got her little water satchel with her. So I'm going to break down the rules of the Agni Kai. According to Avatar Wiki, is where I got the information from, the Agni Kai is a battle between two firebenders. Zuko and Azula, the reason the Agni Kai was challenged was because, because Zuko challenged. That's basically how it went. There was more to it than that, but the reason that Zuko challenged Azula was because he was claiming his birthright. Um, and for the title of Fire Lord, and the that was the one of the main Agni Kai's. But the Agni Kai that started it all was the Agni Kai between Zuko and Fire Lord Ozai. That was the set off the emotions of the events. The events. Um, in some Agni Fire Lord is a jerk. He is a jerk. Um, but according to the um, Avatar Wiki, um, it said that if some Agni Kais of such importance are lost, that they w the loser A will get burned. That is how it's determined who wins the Agni Kai. And that is why Zuko got the burn because he lost the Agni Kai. But if it's even more important um, that they will shave their head, except for the top knot, which the top knot we have seen throughout all of Avatar with Zuko, Iroh, Azula, all Fire Nation has a top knot on top of their head and that can only be cut if they are dishonored or they are leaving. And that is why the significance when Iroh and Zuko did it was when they chopped off their top knot. So I was important because they were saying they were no longer Fire Nation. They were no longer Fire Nation. They were Hotman. They were Hotman. Hotman? Hotman. Hotman? Um. Zuko had another Agni Kai with Admiral Zhao, which led he was unable to burn him, and Zhao was just like, well, you don't deserve to be what you are. And then Ira was just like, nah, bruh. He's got more honor than you than so. You dishonor yourself by trying to break him down. Ah, I knew I was over. Okay. Yeah. I have a lot to say about going back to the final Okay, we'll say things about when this happened. All right, so with the final Agni Kai, I see. Um, basically, they, these two were fighting. You can see that Zuko was getting the upper hand on Azula throughout the entire battle. And if you haven't watched that battle in Avatar, you should. It is one of, I think, one of the best, one of the best battles 
in Avatar because it shows the how far Zuko has grown in his firebending, not relying on hate and anger, but from what the um, what the uh, Sun Warriors taught him that energy fire is life, fire is energy. You don't have to rely on pure hate to help with your firebending. Azula is re relying on pure hate and anger. And that is why you can see she starts to slow down. She's panting. She's not able to catch her breath. She's getting frazzled. She's getting all of the things that she thinks that she was going to win this acne kind. You can see that in her face. When frazzled, you say. Frazzled. She was frazzled. But she was also frazzled before that point. She basically has lost her mind at this point. She's a fragile, broken teenager. And that's what we always have to remember. She's 14. Zuko is 16. Um, but she was frazzled, she was just, you know, not distracted, but she wasn't in her right mind space. Zuko was, and you can see the differences in there, especially Zuko using different types of bending styles. Water. He was using water, he was using air, he was using earth. He was using the different styles to help him in his Agni Kai, while Azula was also just using pure strength. Pure Dragon. He was using dragon technique. He was using dragon technique. Because they went into the mountains and did the dragon dance. They did the dragon dance. And so you can definitely see that throughout their battle that Zuko had the upper hand and Azula realized she had lost. And um, it does uh, that... Um, Azula, and this is from Avatar Wiki, it says, Azula eventually targeted a third person, Katara. 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 Let's scroll that. By shooting her with lightning. So she essentially... Azula saw she was going to lose, so she shot Katara. And the moment she shot Katara was the moment she essentially lost. That is a hill I will die on. That because, why did she lose? Because Katara, uh, the reason Azula lost was because she did bring in a third person who was not a, a firebender, because Agni Kai is between two firebenders. And B, because she knew it would hurt Zuko because she, I, she... They're knew, friend buddies. They're friend buddies. And so Zuko caught the lightning in his heart. And that's not how you're supposed to catch lightning. You're supposed to catch it in your gut. Uh, Uncle Iroh, you know, said that, that when you catch it, make sure you bring it through your gut or your stomach and bring it out the other side. If you bring it through your heart, it could be catastrophic. Or you could do what uh, Aang's grandson did and do some thunder cheeks. What? Remember, he invented butt bending. Ah, air farting, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and shielded Katara from the attack. Um, Katara and uh, Azula did have their little battle. Well, it wasn't a little battle, it was a good battle. And then once. Katara was able to essentially subdue Azula. She was defeating her and then essentially claimed the title in for Zuko. Zuko. So Zuko was the winner of the Agni Kai, not Katara. Katara essentially battled Azula but won it for Zuko. So those are the reasons. Those are the reasons. Um, the Agni Kai between the two of them, like I said, is probably one of the best Agni Kais. There are other Agni Kais throughout Avatar and throughout Avatar 4. It's in um, some instances you can 
I, I don't think there was any Agni Kai's in Legend of Korra, though. You'd have to double check. I would have to double check on that, but I know in previous Avatar, one of Avatar Korok's companions, Heron, was an avid Agni Kai person. She was one of his companions, and she often killed her losers. She was quite fierce, and then her daughter went on to date uh, Kyoshi. Can an avatar fight an Agni Kai? It doesn't specify if an avatar... I think it has to be if fire is your first element. Don't quote me on that, but I'm going off of the rules of that if fire is your first element, you might be able to, but if it's not, I don't think you... So, and, if an avatar was from a water tribe, but the avatar was only using fire bending, that it's not a thing. I don't think that so. That doesn't work. It doesn't really specify because I don't really think any avatar has been a part of an Agni Kai before. It, um, an Agni Kai wouldn't be something that the avatar would partake in, so it doesn't specify. Well, but, Korra was part of that sport. The pro bending sport, and that's yeah, where but I'm kind she of... only used water after they called a foul on her. Yes, because she was using other elements. So I'm kind of going off of that logic, that you can only go off of your first. Yeah, elements. but but the Aang series was the great adventure, really. Yeah. And Korra was extra, extra, read all about it, crazy stuff happens. Exactly. Uh, they both have their... I love Avatar, and Korra was a great show in its own way. And that's another video I can make because I can probably talk about why Korra was a good show in its own way versus why Avatar was a good show. They are both good shows, and they have both equal things. They both have things. They both have important cool. factors that they <laughs> deal with, but that's something I can talk about in another video if you would like to hear why I think Avatar, the differences between Avatar and Korra. Okay, so why don't we go on and open, open up. her up and see why this box is so dang big. Alright, let's see. Alright, and it looks like first out of the box is Azula in her final Agni Kai crazy look. Um, she came with shooting lightning out of her hand, which we currently have on her right now. Isn't that fire? It is fire, her blue fire. I apologize. Yeah, just look how deranged and evil she looks. Yeah. So it's got movement in the feet, knees, legs, arms, elbows. Um, elbows don't really move hmm. a lot. The hands do, but it doesn't really look like there's an actual joint on the elbows because they're not really moving. Well, it's I'm kind of bendy. I guess, but it's not really doing much. And she comes with this little stand and this extra hand, hand there. And this goes in there. Although the only actual point that that would go would be in the feet because there's like nowhere else like in the back or anything. So, so it can make it look like she's flying? I guess you can bend this, whatever. I don't know, just have her do that. <laughs> I don't know, this just seems like a, a very weak stand and it's not really all that poseable for just the feet. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Uh-huh. So, I mean, she could stand on the little platform thing, because that has the foot peg, yeah. and she could stand in there. 
Yep. Yep. And this fire right here is an extremely big heavy piece just to be attached by such a small sliver. Mm -hmm. So it's like weighing her down. So that seems like a weird design there. Yeah. Okay, who's next? Let's go with Katara. All right, for the next one we're gonna go through is Katara. Um, she yeah, just look at how much shorter she is compared. It's like waist high. Yeah. The, well, they are like two. Azula looks like a behemoth Amazon behind her. Well, they are two different brands. They are two different brands. So we have Katara. She She's comes got with different water bendings. Different waters to bend. Comes with another face mold. So it's her smiling. I'm gonna give that to you. With her braid and hair it's loopies. A really messed up looking smile. It is a very messed up looking smile. Her water that she carries to bend. And then a variety of different hands and Katara has fallen. Mm-hmm. So why don't you put on her water satchel? So I'm just gonna go like that. I have to take off her head to put it all over her head. Please excuse this. We need to decapitate Katara. Okay, we reattached her head. It just snaps on and off. Yeah. Um, this has uh, her feet. Looks like we got her knees. And I think we got her hips as well. And her arms, shoulders. Do her elbows move? Her elbows do move. Mm -hmm. go like that. Of course, her head she has this good range of motion for everything. They're just a little tricky to stand up. Well, so, tricky for you. Tricky for me. Here, put some of her water bendies on. I think I have to put on a different hand. So we'll. They're fairly heavy for the the water. Uh, we have this. Hmm. Doesn't look like the other ones really have things I can that she can hold on to. Looks like it's just this one. And that one is fairly similar to this one. They're practically the same thing. Yeah. I'm sure this fits one of her hands. Probably, somehow. Maybe those Maybe are close fits. This one. Something. These are both closed fists, so they probably wouldn't work. I don't know, there's like an indent there. It looks like a hand could fit, but... Uh... Oh, there you go. There, see, it, it actually tucks in huh. the fingers there. So that goes on that one. And then this one goes like that. There you go. Now she's ready. Use her small ability to fight Zula. Oh, she just could bloodbender and just end it all. True. Which I was very... It was very interesting that she didn't use bloodbending. Probably because Azula, she didn't feel maybe Zula deserved to be bloodbend. Blood bent 
like the man who killed her father. Wasn't it that witch? Yes, she was the one who initially taught Katara how to bloodbend, and then in Legend of Korra, we saw that bloodbending was essentially illegal. Illegal. Because because Katara said so. Because Katara said so. All right, and then we're gonna go on to Zuko. Hey Zuko. Here's Zuko. And Zuko is in his avatar, meetup avatar outfit. He comes with the broadsword holder and two ones already in there. And this broadsword, because they are one in essentially the same sword, just two. That's a closed fist hand. That you is need a closed to fist. Swap out his hand. Yes, with his hand. We'll hold his sword. And we have essentially, I would say his head is the Earth Nation hair. One was just a little bit, a little uh, shorter, but not completely bald. It's kind of his head he had brought the Earth Nation. And then that is when he was with the Avatar gang. Or well, it's a little bit longer. And I always do enjoy in the, um... The Ember Island players when they do when they do it and Iroh is like Zuko we have to talk about your hair because his hair has changed frequently and I think that was just a fun way for the writers just to you know understand that this was funny for us and that the actual that the voice of Zuko in with the Ember Island players is actually the voice voiced by uh, Dante Bosco, his brother, who Rufio, Rufio, who voices Zuko, his brother, Rufio, actually, Rufio, Rufio. This is not. That's in the movie. And Hook. In Hook, but we're not talking about Hook. We're right? talking about Rufio. We're, we're talking about Dante Bosco. I, I would really say the hard thing about these figures are they are a little harder to stand. Well, just cause I joints mean, the so joints move. move so effortlessly, you know, and it's not like they, if I tried to like that, yeah, that it's very hard to get him to stand up just because they don't stay. It would have been nice if it came with like a little stand, like Azula did. Even though she's very tall. Um, it's nice she did come with a stand and something to make her move. It would have been nice if they had come with a stand just to help keep them upright. The McFarland Batman series all come with stands as far as I can tell. Yes, but... That's... This is not McFarland. It is not. Uh, I don't actually... I'm just leaving there. Um, it also came with two fireballs and the hands. You know, the Agni Kai is very similar to a Kagath. Yes, the Kagath in Star Wars. Mm hmm. It's in Swotor where Darth Anadon challenges you. It's basically the same thing, only it's power base versus power base. So, yeah, pretty much the same thing. Overall, I do like the, the figures we got. Like I said, these ones are a little harder to stand up just because they are very flexible. Really, the only downside is that they should have come with a stand to help keep them up. I do like... Yeah, there's no peg hole in the feet, though. So. Yeah. Um, I do like the variety of... Um, Accessories that they came with. We have the broadswords. We have Katara's water holder, and we also have her necklace. Uh, it comes with four sets of hands. And two heads. Yeah, and accessories. And accessories. Yeah, it probably should have come with his blue mini face. The blue spirit, yes, but I think that's a different action figure in itself. Probably. Yeah. And 
anything else no. about this? I I could really talk about Avatar for hours and hours and hours, and I probably have. Well, you should probably hurry before the Fire Nation attacks. I know. Well, the Fire Nation has already attacked. Let's leave that right there. Uh, um, overall, I like these figures. They were good. They're good um, to have. Really, like I said, having a stand would have maybe helped a little bit to keep them more upright. But overall, I, I do enjoy the different hands and faces and what you can do with the figures. Because um, of their posability? Because their posability, they are very posable. We can make them fight, which is always fun. Um, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Uh, if you like more Avatar content, just let us know in the comments. And we'll see you guys next time.